Hello, everyone, and welcome. Yes, we're live now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Learning Machine Learning webinar. Um, very excited to have you here today. Um, and with us today, we're going to be having a very interesting combination conversation, I believe. Um, excited about this conversation, and I hope you're going to learn a lot from this, and we're going to dive right in right now. So. I'm going to introduce my guest. Or, in fact, I'll let him introduce himself. Um, Karim, do you want to tell us who you are? Hi, Anyedi. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Pleasure to be here. So I'm Karim Begir, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of InstaDeep AI, which is a, an African AI startup. And I'm also a Google machine learning developer expert. I also uh, participate as a mentor to uh, the Google for Startups uh, Accelerator program as well in Africa. Fantastic. Okay, so I usually start this in a very stereotypical way. Um, in your own understanding, the way you are attracted to this discipline and the way you en encountered it and interacted with it, what do you understand or what do you tell people that machine learning or in a broader sense, AI really is? So, so for me, uh, AI uh, is uh, the most beautiful application of applied mathematics. Uh, back when I was, you know, at university, I was uh, I had a passion for applied math, and for me today, AI is the most beautiful fruit of applied mathematics. In a larger sense of things, it's also the defining technology of our time. It is, uh, in, in a sense, where the action is happening, uh, you know, in this uh, age and place, and so it's a super exciting adventure to be part of. I think that's a very simple, straightforward. Um, my interaction with AI and the way I feel about AI, the way I try to understand AI, sometimes has to deal with either the products I'm interacting with, whether these be tools that are for your work or for your job or for the products or services you're building, or whether it's the consumer apps, be they finding directions, finding cat pictures, organizing friends and family, when you see AI in the world today, what apps, what services have you interacted with in your daily life that you can't do without that AI has been like the defining, what, what is that amazing thing about AI that you felt in consumer apps or business apps that intrigue you right now? I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable what you can do today, for example, with, uh, you know, like automated uh, translation systems that are built on neural networks. Uh, what you can do with, uh, for example, like style transfer on a phone, you take a picture and you can create create sort of like comics or, or art or things like that. So it's actually very hard to find an application uh, today that couldn't be improved or that is not already using AI. So like literally like you could take any task, any any project, any anything you want to achieve and probably AI can help you uh, do it better. So, you know, there are tons of applications, but importantly, like, you know, we see, uh, you see, we see huge industries being built uh, with AI today, uh, literally that are transforming uh, industries. And uh, we're quite excited about that at Instadi. You mentioned Instadeep. And Instadeep is sort of like that dream company, a lot of the very young people that I interact with in the community uh, by virtue of the work I do. Can you just tell us a little more about InstaDeep before we get into the meat of today's conversation? So I want to know a little bit about InstaDeep before I frame today's conversation. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I always had a passion for applied mathematics. So after, let's say, a classical career and uh, after graduating, you know, in France and in the US and working like a, like a regular job at a regular company, I was like, you know, I need to do something uh, more exciting. I need to get back to Africa, try to think about how I could be useful and also sort of innovate from a like business model and uh, sort of research point of view as well. And uh, that led me to co-founding InstaDeep in 2014 in uh, North Africa, in Tunisia, with literally two laptops and $2,000. And it was really a project driven by passion. We had no clue what we could achieve, but we felt it was important uh, to try. And the general idea was 
we have talent in Africa. How can we uh, bootstrap ourselves into becoming world class and innovating and proving to the world that we can compete in any key defining industry uh, of our time? And in particular, AI, which was a passion for us. And uh, incredibly, that's kind of what happened. And today, the company is almost 100 employees. We're doing lots of very exciting things. But more than anything else, we followed our heart. And I think that's what matters. Okay, so the question on the premise of today's conversation is building an AI startup in Africa. There's two very distinct things there. One is AI startup. I wonder exactly what that is. And the other is Africa. And Africa is known for a number of things. Let's say abundant natural resources. But oftentimes the conversation around abundant human resources is not necessarily viewed or discussed or seen the same way from inside, from outside, from insiders and by outsiders. Um, let's just talk about the AI startup. When you say you are an AI startup, are you creating AI? Are you implementing AI? Are you adopting AI to businesses? Are you teaching people AI and making a ton of money out of that? What does it really mean to be an AI startup? In, in general, I think it means that uh, you are using AI as a defining factor of your product and leveraging AI to have a competitive advantage. So uh, for you know most cases, that means uh, building a, a product that is going to be uh, leveraging heavily AI and probably some domain expertise uh, in a field. Uh, this would qualify an AI startup, uh, especially if you're doing something new from a product perspective or something cutting edge from a product pers perspective or use case. Uh, another way to look at uh, being an AI startup is to make AI sort of like the central uh, core offering of yours. Uh, this is the case actually for, for InstaDeep. We build decision-making AI systems that leverage AI. But I think if you have a domain expertise in a particular field, whether it's mobility, healthcare, or any other field, retail, but if you're augmenting in an in interesting, innovative, or a powerful way with AI, you are an AI startup. It's about how do you efficiently deploy AI uh, in your product? For example, like if you look at Tesla, Tesla is an AI company because they are very clever about data and what they built in AI and doing frontier stuff. So it doesn't mean that you're only doing AI. It means that you're using AI very effectively and hopefully in an innovative way to disrupt and improve efficiency in your field. AI hype, bust or bubble, has AI delivered? There's a lot of story about AI is nothing new. It's statistics, it's math, it's inference, it's logic. There's also the conversation that there's been an explosion over the last five, six years, 2016, vision improvements, you know, from error rates from like, say, 30% error rates to like less than 3%. We've seen all these fantastic stories. There is still a debate that AI hasn't delivered, AI may not deliver the amount of, I would say, exponential value that the hype and the promise is bringing. As an AI startup, as a founder or co-founder of an AI startup, do you participate in these conversations or are you already just too busy building AI to even try to share when people talk about things like this? Uh, I, th I think today is very clear that uh, AI is delivering. If you look, for example, at you know what uh, DeepMind uh, achieved in the game of Go, uh, before they did it, uh, people thought that it would take a decade before we have an automated system that can beat the world champion uh, across uh, you know in, a, in the game of Go. Yet they did it. That was absolutely insane. And most importantly, the way they did it, which was to mimic sort of like the way humans acquire experience and intuition was absolutely novel. So in my mind, there is no doubt that AI is delivering. That doesn't mean that there is no hype. Of course, there is hype. Like any successful uh, technology and uh, which is part of the current uh, industrial revolution, many people will try to surf on the wave and uh, claim certain things. But uh, it's very clear that when you look at the facts, AI is delivering. And of course, as it delivers, we become uh, more and more demanding. So a part of like the debate about AI not delivering is the fact that we're constantly pushing the goalpost. 
hey, no, okay, you can solve Go, but now you cannot do a natural language uh, conversation. And then you have chatbots like uh, Google's Mina, which is absolutely fantastic. And then people say, no, no, but this is a gimmick. And then uh, OpenAI comes up with a GPT-3 and it's absolutely insane what it can do. So there is no question that it's delivering. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be careful about, uh, you know, which direction we're heading with AI. And in general, it's good to have a debate. And for people who are new in this field, it's it's a very interesting time to join. It's definitely, there's no AI winter uh, whatsoever. Uh, literally, mega industries are being built or disrupted uh, with AI today. Okay, so I am a profound beneficiary of at least the AI that goes into translation. I'm on a 90... A 180 day journey to um, parler français. <laughs> That's you know, amazing. Je, yeah. je parle français, you know, right now, un peu, un peu. And I was very Super. excited to see a question in here. I hope my French reading will be okay. So I'm going to put this on the screen right now and hide my own face so that nobody knows that I can't speak good French. So the question came from the slides uh, where we collect these questions, Slido. And it's quels sont les secteurs rentables de. So I said la on a freak, and then when I looked at it, I was like, no, this is actually IA. So is that how you say intelligence artificial? Yeah, in exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know, I know you're, for those who don't know, you're, uh, you're Tunisian and, you know, Tunisian British. So tell us a little bit about that. First of all, someone's interested, I think, in the sectors, profitable sectors or the greatest sectors of AI in Africa. And then let's move to the conversation on Africa. Yeah, so so the question is really like, you know, what are the, the sectors that are money making from an AI perspective in Africa? Uh, the reality is, you know, any sector that uh, has economic value could be uh, money making with AI. AI uh, is a powerful technology which is multi-purpose. So any sector where you see significant traction in Africa could be a fertile ground uh, to build your AI startup. Uh, for example, telecoms, uh, retail, uh, you know, uh, transportation and mobility. Uh, so there isn't as such uh, in like a specific AI field. It's more that AI can help you boost the product you're bringing to market. And if this uh, product and this sector is thriving in Africa or can thrive in Africa, uh, definitely you can even accelerate it further with AI. Okay. Um, we have another question here. And then I, I think I might, I might need to rephrase the question for the person but I'll pop it on the screen. It says, how can we start our startup? Like Cote de Finance. I don't know if that's the exact part, so maybe it's a, fact, it's a startup in the finance sector. And how can we make others believe in our idea? So rather than just throwing advice, because sometimes advice needs to be contextual. How did you get the industry to believe in InstaDeep? I remember with, with you at Deep Learning in Daba in uh, 2018, where yes. we had the opportunity to meet you know, Jeff Dean and a couple of people, and we were both excited. We're like, we need to get Jeff Dean to this table to see Insta Deep, and if he speaks to us, he'll be impressed. And uh, I think you made you, you made it happen. So, how does an AI startup get attention? How can you make others believe in you to bet on you to say, okay, all our oil industry drilling, all the way we're going to be looking for minerals, the way we're going to be diagnosing, I don't know, diseases, uh, we will pivot a little bit from the traditional way we're doing, and we're going to try this AI thing that this fantastic new company is, is offering to, to bring to the table. It's a, it's, it's a great question first. And, uh, you know, uh, for people who are considering like building a startup, it's definitely an exciting journey. And uh, it's a journey I took, as I mentioned, uh, you know, in the years 2013 and 2014, leading to the foundation, co-foundation of InstaDeep in, in April 2014. The key thing is, if you want others to believe in your, in your idea, you have yourself to believe in it. So what do I mean by that? If you are not capable, for example, of jumping ship and stopping doing anything else to focus on your startup, well, how do you want others to believe in it? So the first step, if you want to get started on your journey, is what I call burning your bridges. In life, we always have opportunities, multiple opportunities. And it's very human to say, hey, I'm going to try several things, see what works. And depending on what works and what clicks, uh, you know, I'll, I'll focus on that. That actually doesn't work. I can confirm to you it doesn't work because I did that uh, before InstaDeep. I had this idea that, hey, I'm going to try several things and see how it goes. 
things will start to go right the moment you give all your heart and soul into your project and you believe in it to the point where it's so obvious that you're going to get traction and uh, that you're going to first convince others to follow you, uh, early, early employees who are uh, talented employees, and ultimately create a traction and momentum that others will notice. But the best way to have others to believe in your idea is that you will believe in it yourself and act accordingly by burning uh, all your bridges and focusing 200% on your idea, on your project. It's, it's actually a great filter. If you cannot do that, well, somehow that means that your idea has a problem. If you can do that, well, you know what? You're up to a great start. There are other challenges, but at least you're started. <laughs> I, 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 considering the two conversations we've had, I think at Deep Learning, actually our first conversation also in Lagos, where you came visiting as a mentor for then Launchpad Africa, um, I, f I feel a bit attacked that I have, I love AI and machine learning, but I've not been able to burn the bridge. Like the Google bridge is a very big, a very sturdy bridge. It's not, it's not that easy to burn, Karim. <laughs> um, in addition, I think uh, uh, one of our speakers, your friend, uh, Robert John, uh, fellow machine learning GDE, on our first episode, had a very serious joke or jokingly seriously said, it takes three years to be, to be a learner in machine learning and AI. Three years to become a learner. Uh, for, for a company like yours that has invested so much in AI talent, like you pick people, I mean, we've got Ted, you've got all, all these all these smartest people who want to start out at, uh, at, at InstaDeep. And I think that's what Vanessa has just uh, said here, which have popped on the screen. Do you really give your new intakes, your interns, three years to figure it out? Does it take three years to figure it out? We think, you know, uh, in general, like the field is moving at such a speed that, yeah, even even in a bit less than three years, depending on what you've done before. But like uh, in our experience at InstaDeep, among the people we hire, we can we can bring them from let's say relatively early stage out of uh, out of a university or out of high school, or even like self you know self taught. Sometimes we we actually also hire people who are self taught who are brilliant. Sometimes uh, in two years you can actually bring them to uh, to world class status. The key thing is uh, like personal commitment to to the mission. AI moves extremely fast. You have literally hundreds of new research papers being posted every day. It's an arms race going on across the world between you know China, the US, Europe, but in Africa too. So it's more about like how much intensity and passion you can throw into uh, you know the project and the team you work with. If you're passionate and intense about it, it's actually an exciting time to to get started. So uh, it might sound like the, the field is overwhelming. There's a lot going on, and that's true. But if you're really motivated, uh, actually, I believe that you know in a couple of years or maybe three years, like John said, you can get to a point where you are the best at what you do in your specific uh, narrowly defined field, if you want. Speaking of specific, someone has a very specific question. Which industry sector or problem space has the highest potential gain or upside from adopting AI? And I, this is, in your opinion, I, I always like that people know that advice is opinionated. Yeah, I mean, it's as I mentioned, AI can benefit uh, many sectors, but I think today, and I'm looking here not just at startups, but as at, at, at industries as a whole, there are two fields uh, which uh, hold at the moment uh, incredible promise, and one which uh, holds a bit uh, incredible promise, but a bit further down the road, which I'll mention. But today, if you look at the state of uh, mobility, in particular self driving uh, cars uh, and uh, trucks uh, powered by AI, it's a very exciting field. There are still many people in the world that don't believe that this is happening. Yet, if you look at what Waymo is doing, what Tesla is doing, we're definitely getting there much faster than, than people believe. So that's a huge industry being totally disrupted by AI. The other field which is super exciting is, uh, you know, the field of uh, healthcare and particular person personalized drug design. Uh, there is a lot happening. Uh, biology is extremely complex. If you think about it, you know, physics is built on mathematics, chemistry 
chemistry is built on top of phys physics and uh, biology is built on top of everything with incredible complexity and ai is sort of very well adapted to sort of find the meaning and the insight within that complexity so i expect actually significant breakthroughs including uh, in for example like uh, cancer cures for specific type of cancers uh, things of that nature to come in the coming years people are going to be surprised a bit further down the road my opinion is that robotics which uh, you know for many many years everybody's been expecting robotics to really make an impact i believe this is going to start happening because uh, sort of like everything is sort of coming together now in terms of like uh, ai for uh, continuous control, uh, speed and uh, of learning at scale, uh, edge AI to recognize situation in real time. So robotics is about to become huge uh, also. So you see that there is a lot going on. These are, I would say, trillion dollar industries. That doesn't mean that as a startup, you should be focused on them. But this is to give you an idea about what is really changing in the world. And of course, in every specific field you look at, you will find a use of AI. So if you are uh, competent, if you have domain expertise, expertise in a particular field, you will benefit from AI and AI will accelerate your project and startup. Okay, very good. So we have like uh, two directions on which we can go, right? And, and like the classic Alice in Wonderland story, um, the question is, should we go left or should we go right? And it's like, it depends on where, <laughs> where you're headed to. So there, we haven't touched the Africa question well. And the Africa question has to do with abundance of talent. We've seen people make comments about the fact that there's a lot of talent going into InstaDeep. Uh, someone says, you just spoke about talent in Africa. What would be your advice uh, to developers to stand out in the AI field? I, I want to take it a little bit backwards and ask, why are you so passionate about talent in Africa? I mean, you could have there's talent everywhere in the world. There is more obvious, in quote, talent in, you know, in the UK, in France. And, and I mean, you had the opportunity to, to start your business everywhere. And I think the reason why you connected with me was you noticed there was some passion uh, about talent in Africa. And it sort of kept inspiring me. Look at where I am now. I'm actually doing a, a webinar on, on, on AI and machine learning. But, but what drives that talent, passion, conversation, motivation for you when you look at the African continent? What, what is the driving force behind that? I mean, for, for me, it's a, it's a very personal thing. I, I grew up in, uh, in a city called uh, Tatooine in, in Tunisia, which is actually the planet Tatooine of Star Wars. Uh, they came to, to shoot Star Wars over there. And, uh, and then I studied and graduated uh, in France and then the US. And I sort of was always attached to the idea that uh, Africa really should rise and, and can rise. And we, we've, all of us, we've talked about this endlessly. So my question was, how can I be actually useful for this? And uh, my conclusion is that the best way to actually get Africa to, to rise and innovate, get amazing startups to, 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 to be part of the ecosystem, to sort of surprise uh, people and exceed their expectation is actually by doing it. Uh, you know, uh, we all know that Africa has potential. The difference, particularly uh, for all of us who have potential in Africa, is are we doing it or not? And this is the key point. It's about doing. It's not about talking. And sort of... You know, after, you know, 10 years working in uh, the US and in the UK, I felt this was my true calling. I felt this is what I wanted people to remember me for. Uh, if, you know, that sounds like grandio grandiloquent, but it's actually true. <laughs> I, I, I really felt about it very deeply. And I was like, look, I'm passionate about this. I think I can make a difference. You know what? I'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. Many people uh, among my friends said, you're just nuts. It will never work. But uh, now they actually want to work at InstaDeep. So you know what? We'll try, you know. <laughs> That's very, they now want to work at InstaDeep. We have one very interesting question, but I'll leave it towards the end when we've done a lot more. Um, and, 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 and I want to be sure that everything goes well before I ask that question. Um, but this is the place, point where I ask you, so now you have, interacted with the talent from Africa. You've employed people, you've seen people move on, you know, rise, they come join your company, learn a lot, become more powerful, want to go acquire more education, write fantastic papers. Um, I will start with one, your specialization, what's your own area of interest? Is it just at the 
managerial, building a startup, building the strategy, or have you taken a very specific fo focus in maybe computer vision, natural language understanding or processing, deep learning, neural networks? What is that sort of like your own area of specialization? And on a broader sense, what is the, where InstaDip, InstaDip really excels? What area of AI and machine learning and data science is, is, is really InstaDip known for? Sure. Uh, I mean, I, I've been passionate about uh, neural networks uh, for a while. Actually, uh, my first project in neural networks was in 2002. I was at university in the US at the time. This was during the AI winter. And uh, I sort of did a project where I shown that, hey, neural networks could be as good as uh, nonlinear regression, which was which was pretty cool, but uh, still was a toy. Today, my passion about the AI is quite broad, but what I'm what I care most about is how can AI uh, change the world? How can AI uh, deploy uh, like novel ways to solve problems or crack problems that were seen as uh, impossible to solve? So if you look at the different uh, subfields of uh, you know AI and machine learning, uh, have a specific interest around reinforcement learning. The notion that an autonomous AI system could really figures out uh, what to do better than a human expert and uh, by consequence improving efficiency across multiple industries that was super exciting to me when uh, alpha zero came and you know that this huge breakthrough from google DeepMind, i was absolutely passionate about but my my interest is for the field as a whole so nlp is super interesting these days uh, computer vision is super interesting my advice is really focus on what you're uh, most passionate about and dig deeper Today, if I look at this, I would say it's mostly reinforcement learning, even though I keep a broad uh, coverage, uh, like in terms of like what's going on. And uh, coming to my role at InstaDeep, um, my goal is really uh, both to drive the strategy, but uh, still be part of the key uh, engineering challenges. I still participate in key uh, engineering design decisions uh, when it comes to breakthrough innovation of our products. And at the same time, sort of steer the company to where it should be and how it can be an example for many others in Africa and beyond to, to follow their dreams and, and starting acting on them. It's actually possible to uh, make great progress, uh, to, to reach success if you believe, uh, you know, uh, intensely enough uh, in your project. And uh, I'm, I really care about the ecosystem. I really want others to believe in their dreams and start acting on them. Okay, so we're coming to more or less my last question, and we're getting to the half of the hour. Um, I know we had some scheduling, you may have something to do, but it seems like you've given us a little more time, and we have a lot of very interesting audience questions. Sure. So my last question is, it's a very common question for people who want to take the leap, because it is a leap into the field of AI. Um, and you have, a, you, you have like a, a stellar background with, you know, maths, you know, statistics, you know, discrete mathematics, um, how important is that for someone studying out in AI? And I say this because you've interacted with a lot of AI talents that have schooled on the continent. And for someone who has schooled on the continent, I know how, I need to choose my words carefully. I, I, I know how interesting the, the knowledge gap can be <laughs> when you've spent all your time you know, schooling in most of the public universities or public colleges in, in Africa. So, so when someone wants to get into AI and you don't have discrete maths, you can't do calculus, you know, differential statistics, how, how easy is it or what other routes to stay within the AI, maybe product management, maybe AI UX, maybe AI research, maybe AI fairness, you know, ethics. Uh, let's talk about how important the mathematical foundations are. And then let's talk about how not important the mathematical foundations are in, in, in other aspects of AI. Yeah, in general, I think because the, the principles on which uh, modern deep learning and reinforcement learning and AI innovation are built are actually quite simple and quite easy to explain, 
anybody can get into it. So uh, how deep you should get into it really depends on your objectives and uh, your own, uh, say, comparative, uh, you know, uh, advantages. Let me give you an example. If you are a, 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 a superstar a software engineer and you know absolutely nothing about, uh, you know, applied mathematics, that's okay. You can actually, uh, you know, thanks to your computer science background, uh, get uh, amazing results by going online and finding all the available resources for example, with TensorFlow, on TensorFlow Hub, you're going to find already like pre-trained models. You don't actually need to know how this works to be very productive in AI. Uh, same way as if you are a policymaker or somebody who looks at, you know, the ethical impact of AI, you don't need to go deep in the mathematics to understand, uh, you know, the challenges and build up, uh, you know, an opinion about things. Now, if you are building uh, an elite R&D uh, company, uh, which wants to innovate and publish papers, obviously you need to dig super deep into what's going on in research, uh, what is missing, where research is, is heading. It all relates to where you see your comparative advantage uh, to be. So when we talk about building an AI startup in Africa, the question you should ask yourself is, how could you define your project in a way that you are the world's best at it? Sounds uh, mm. crazy ambitious, but it's mm. actually the way you should look at it. Uh, startups mm. are very competitive. The advantage is you get to define what you are the world's best at. So that's the beauty of it. You, you have a degree of freedom there yeah, that you should definitely use. But try to think deeply on based on your past life history, your past professional, personal experiences. What makes you special? What could you do potentially better than anybody else? That's what you should focus on. And you don't have to worry. AI will help you on the way. But really don't start a project where... Uh, you feel I should do this because others are doing it. It's actually the other way around. Look at what yourself can do that others cannot do and act accordingly. I can give you my personal take on this. Uh, when I started, uh, when I co-founded InstaDeep, I had two strengths. I, I was actually competent and passionate about applied mathematics. And also I had sort of like first uh, hand insight about what African talent can do because that's where I'm from and I know in the community what we can achieve. These are the two foundational uh, core elements that led to InstaDeep and what it is today. And each one of you has its own uh, sort of special talent and that's what you need to dig into. You have to be the world's best at what you do, but you get to define what it is. So it's not as hard as it sounds. Awesome, awesome. Our next question, uh, you've already talked a little bit about some of the, I think you've even given some of the best advice, which is, it's not a matter of joining the bandwagon, it's actually jumping off the bandwagon and like exactly. creating your yeah. own path, right? That, so, but if, if you think back to the points where you made decisions, right? Um, and this must have been a deep decision, you know, insta-deep. Right? I don't know whether you made an instantly deep decision I don't know, but anyway, I don't know. But um, what was what's the kind of advice that you you really heard, or, or you you've gotten of recent from anyone in the industry or anyone out there? What's the the worst advice or thing you've heard about AI that could easily have either stopped you from building your company or made you start building a new bridge? It's, a, it's actually a great question. I, I've never had this question before, but I'll tell you, <laughs> the worst advice I've been given. Uh, uh, you know, as, as I told you, I've always been a passionate uh, about what's going on. When I was at, uni at uh, Ecole Polytechnique in France, I wrote an article about Alan Turing uh, and cracking the Enigma and Bletchley Park. This was 1998. At the time, Bletchley Park was abandoned. Alan Turing was still sort of like considered as uh, almost like a criminal in, in the UK, etc. This was way before the imitation game and, and, and etc. So uh, in the years 2011, 2012, uh, 2013, that was the time when, uh, you know, IBM was coming up with uh, Geopardy, like this, uh, you know, this uh, the Watson system that uh, delivered such great results on the Geopardy game and beat the champions. 
I was absolutely fascinated by this. And at the time I was trying to, you know, look at entrepreneurship, what you should do, etc. And many people who were influential to me, they were like, and I was telling them, look, this isn't interesting. Like we need to dig into this. Like maybe there's something to do with AI, etc. And everybody was like, no, 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 this is super complicated. Look, IBM, they took like maybe a hundred PhDs to build this system. <laughs> who are you? you? You don't even have a PhD. Actually, I don't have a PhD. That was the worst advice because I could actually have started InstaDeep in 2012, 2013, and I started it in 2014 uh, against advice by many people. And I'll tell you, don't be afraid of AI. No matter how complicated it seems, no matter how fast moving it, it seems, it's all about what is your unique take and what is your, the unique value add that you can bring. So a good way, if you're thinking about starting a startup you know, in Africa and in AI, a good way to know if you're in the right direction or not is, is there a specific field, as I mentioned, where you're super competent that you could really be one of the world's best at? But at the same time, you disagree with uh, common knowledge. Most people disagree with you, but you know that actually your information base is stronger than them. Like you, you have strong indicators that actually you know more what you're talking about than, than others. And sort of you have a sort of contrarian approach. Dig into this. That might be interesting. All right. Fantastic. So this is one of those questions that uh, I try to moderate and not filter, but you have a right to answer or not answer. Any observations in relative pros and cons of launching a startup in Tunisia versus the US versus France versus UK and other countries? Uh, I say this because I have a friend who has a very interesting article and it's about what is really an African startup. And, and, and if you are in Nigeria right now, there's a, there's a debate that I won't tap into about is this or that startup and an, an African startup or a startup in Africa? So um, I, I, I don't know, InstaDeep, African startup or startup in Africa? And when it comes to things like jurisdiction, maybe raising money, where do you incorporate your company? Um, do, do you have some things you want to share or do you have things people should just generally sure. think about before they go and, and make a decision? Absolutely. You know, InstaDeep is uh, definitely an African startup. Uh, you know, if you're passionate enough to start your project with uh, $2,000 and two laptops in Africa, and uh, on top of it, you're African, well, I, I guess you cannot become more African AI startup than that. It doesn't mean that later on you cannot uh, be headquartered in the UK or in the US. It's definitely easier to raise money. The key point uh, for me about are you are you truly African or not is, is it at the heart of your strategy? to bring back value to Africa, meaning bring back value to the ecosystem, bring val value to, to people. So it is about like, ultimately, you know, if you're not there, would the ecosystem be, uh, you know, uh, less exciting, less attractive or not. And I'm quite proud of what InstaDeep is doing. Uh, last year, we organized the largest machine learning hackathon uh, in history. We did it in Africa. There were 20 different nationalities uh, attending the competition. Importantly, this was an InstaDeep event. And then Google uh, gave us great support and we ended up co-organizing the event. So if, if being African means you really care about the continent, you really care about having a lasting impact in, in a crazy way, I'll tell you what, if you actually have the right intentions, if you actually uh, sometimes help without any obvious short-term benefit. I actually believe that longer term, you're going to be bigger and more successful that if you are looking at it from a greedy point of view, from one sort of like taking short-term advantage of people. So uh, that was our journey at InstaDeep. We were very surprised of some crazy good events that happened to us. But I think it's about being missionary rather than mercenary in your approach. If you really believe in the continent, if you really believe that the continent should rise, people will notice that, you know, actions speak louder than words. That doesn't mean that you need to do everything in Africa. So the part of the question is about how do you look at different uh, locations? The way I look at different locations is that as an African startup, you can definitely benefit from exposure uh, to the UK, the US, Europe, uh, also Asia, not just to raise funds, also to uh, find uh, competent individuals with whom to share and learn. So it's about building a diverse company 
with uh, strong roots from Africa. If you do that, you will be successful. So we shouldn't see openness to other location as diluting uh, how impactful we are in Africa. It's actually the opposite. I believe that uh, to be the most influential you can be, you have to be a force across multiple continents without ever forgetting your roots and why you're doing this and having that sense of bringing purpose and bringing value to people beyond the simple uh, profit motive. I actually believe that people and companies that do that will long term be more successful than uh, sort of like greedy short term style projects. And uh, especially because entrepreneurship is hard. So if you really believe in your values, if you believe you're doing it for the right reasons, you're going to sustain the pain much longer and all the greedy people will have already abandoned because it's not that easy. <laughs> Well, that, that's some that's some very good advice. Uh, very good. Be a missionary rather than a mercenary. I, I won't forget that 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 really struck some chords. Um, what's a very interesting book or article you read recently, uh, and would recommend others to read? I mean, there, there are lots of great books about AI, but uh, there is a, there is one that I love particularly. It's Life Three Zero from Max Tegmark. I think it's a it's a beautiful book. It, it's, it really conveys how powerful AI is for the future of humanity uh, in this uh, time and age. Uh, and sort of like even like the cosmic future, uh, like literally up to the galaxy. It's, it's an incredible intellectual journey. It's not necessarily a book to, to make you a better person to launch your AI startup. If you want to learn more about like practicalities, ecosystem, business insights, AI Superpowers by Kai Fu Lee is, is definitely a great book as well. But uh, if you ask me my personal favorite book, yeah, Max Tegmark. It's, this book is just beautiful. Okay, okay. So, um, I mean, this, is, this has been a very interesting question. I've loved the questions. The answers have been very on point and succinct. Um, earlier in the day, you talked a little bit about robotics and things you're interested in. So a question that was not a question was put to you and um, to me, uh, but not to you, but I'm going to take the question on your behalf, right? Sure. Um, we're having this interview live, supposedly. How far are you sure I'm not a deep fake or a robot or a mean apart clone? Maybe I'm somewhere else right now and just a hologram or something else. Can you prove to me that is there some Turing test, some... Kareem or Insta Deep test that you can use to prove that you're actually talking to an AD right now, or that I'm actually talking to you. I, I, I mean, you could be recorded. I don't know, Kareem. Like, save us here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, uh, we need to get someone in the audience to crack a joke, yeah. and then we also or, 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 or pose a riddle that we try to solve it, and then they'll be really, really sure that we are here right now, and it's not a recording or a deep fake. It's a fun question, but it's a, it's a deep question too. Uh, I'll give you two answers. Like straight to the question first is, uh, yes, actually, uh, as an AI expert, I believe that we will be able to do like uh, deep fake videos that are very convincing, but probably in two, three years time. So we still have a bit more time. And also that uh, AI is a double edged sword. So the same way you can create a very convincing fake, you can actually get AI systems to detect those very convincing fakes. Uh, Facebook recently had a, a competition on the topic. So there's going to be a balance, a sort of like uh, technology uh, creating danger, but technology also solving and preventing you from danger. There are also other technologies such as blockchain that can actually be used to prove that you are who you claim you are. Now, on a larger and deeper sense of things. I'll share with you this advice because I think this is important. We live in, in, in an age where you see lots of debates about fake news. It's impacting uh, politics in certain countries, uh, mostly outside of Africa, but for sure at some point this will become our reality as well. And the question becomes, who can you trust? Uh, how can you still be uh, sort of having a well-informed way of th or take on things? And I'll share my personal advice to you. It's actually built on, on science. If you look at uh, basically, uh, you know, the principles beyond Bayes' theorem, Bayes' theorem is basically telling you every new piece of information you can use to uh, better refine your understanding of the world and if you do that over a consistent amount of time, it's actually incredible how much noise you can filter out of this. 
like look at the facts don't look at what people are saying and if you do this on any topic you care about science technology economics politics or anything but you do it over a long horizon and you see what is happening versus what you thought would happen and update your sort of like prior probability distribution about what can happen that is actually an extremely powerful way to look about uh, the world so to answer your question to know if you're a fake or not, I'll use all the information I know about you, Agnedi. And my price, uh, my probability right now is that it is you, 99.9%. 99.9%. Stiano, my friend from Dakar, said, Gulf, this just show me jollof rice. I, I, yes, I think my reaction to jollof rice would, uh, would determine that, I, that I'm real. <laughs> and Tiano had one more question, and I think he touched on it. And I think it's, it's this intersection of these um, fourth industrial revolution technologies. You talked about identity and blockchain. Um, so the, the, there's something here, AI. How do you see AI tapping into other revolutionary? I mean, AI is already dependent on big data, and, and it's the cloud. And I've heard you give us that talk. And, and I prob it's something you should probably just share with this audience, why AI is important now, and how the exponential growth in cloud storage and computing power over the last couple of years has made AI great. Now, as we go into the quantum computing and other things like blockchain, and some new buzzwords that are going to come out that we've not heard of. Uh, what what do you see as the future of technology, and what's that? What's AI's position in relation to other you know groundbreaking technologies like blockchain, quantum computing, and things like that? I think in general, like first, uh, yes, you, you mentioned uh, you know a point I make relatively regularly in my lectures, which is that AI is a triple exponential. Uh, AI is driven by three factors, and each one of those factors grows exponentially. Data obviously grows exponentially. Compute power obviously grows exponentially. But also, and more interestingly, the algorithms themselves that power machine learning uh, and AI. A recent OpenAI study showed that actually efficiency of AI algorithms doubles every 16 months. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you look at the amount of computation a uh, visual AI system in uh, 2012 would take to get to a certain amount of performance, today you can get to uh, the same performance uh, with uh, 44x less computation. So you need half as much computation every uh, going uh, in the future every 16 months. That is insane. So as a consequence, if you're wondering like, hey, should I jump into the AI bandwagon or not? Well, you definitely should because you're investing effectively in a triple exponential that's actually accelerating. And even AI itself is sort of like, uh, and this is the part about uh, technology that you mentioned and the role of AI. AI is now accelerating technology itself. Uh, at InstaDeep, we did a world first uh, in uh, actually hardware design. We showed that a fully autonomous AI system could actually route components on a printed circuit board. Google actually showed similar results uh, four or five months later. That is revolutionary. We always think about, hey, chips are accelerating AI, but now it's the other way around. AI is accelerating chips. And you're going to see this kind of like feedback loops in bioinformatics, in robotics, in self-driving and mobility. So there is no doubt that no matter what you plan to do with your life and with your next project and startup, AI has to be part of it. And I'm actually very encouraged, Agnedi, to see that you've actually jumped into it and you're now uh, very actively learning machine learning, but not just learning, but also sharing the experience to a wide audience. I think this is great. This is what we need for the future. And importantly, AI is also a great equalizer. Everything is available online today. So it doesn't matter if you're in Africa, in Asia, in South America. Everybody has pretty much access to the same amount of data. You know what's the difference? The difference is how motivated and how intense about it you are. And I believe that in Africa, we're quite motivated. We know what it is and what it takes to rise against adversity. And as a consequence, uh, you know, what motivates us at InstaDeep is to prove that uh, an African AI startup uh, like InstaDeep or like I hope others also will rise to the opportunity can surprise the world by showing how, uh, you know, how innovative, how disruptive African AI talent uh, can be. That is what drives us. But it's a very exciting time. And uh, yes, highly recommend you reading the book from Max Tegmart, Life 3.0. But importantly, getting on that journey. It's not hard uh, and it will benefit you no matter what are your objectives. Amazing, 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 amazing. Uh, 
Well, we, we, we roughly have a few more minutes to go. Um, so I think the, I usually like, like to wrap this up. I, I know you've said it in many ways within the context of the conversation, um, but a lot of people get scared about either building an IT career or branching out into a new field. Um, so, so yeah, you've said, do not be afraid, you know, be ambitious. Um, let's wrap it up and take it home. This is what we want to take away from you. How do you advise people to build a technology career? How do you build a technology career? And how do you not build a technology career? And I always put this out there to everyone. This is opinionated information coming from someone who's been there and done that. And he's saying things as he sees it in his context with his own background of education, experience, and all that. But let, let, let's say I was going to just um, say, no, I, I don't want to do the thinking. I want you to just guide me. Just mentor me, and I would, I would follow whatever recommendations you give. How do you tell people to start building a technology career or to branch into a new aspect of technology like AI? I, I think you have to follow your heart. If you work on a topic you're uh, passionate about, you know everything else being equal, you're gonna be you're gonna be successful, and this is very important. It is a challenging uh, world. There is a lot of competition. So what makes the difference is really very often like how committed you are to what you're building. So pick up a topic and a subject you're super excited about, and if it is a particular you know branch of technology. Uh, that that's great but no matter what you pick up and ideally as i mentioned something that you're really uh, passionate and competent about if you have both passion and competence that's a great start you're gonna find ways to accelerate your project with ai but importantly it's about doing uh, if you look at the state of you know machine learning and ai today uh, we receive lots of resumes lots of application at instadeep i'll tell you for the audience what we care about we care about any sign that you're truly passionate and competent about what you're talking about. So I would value much higher the fact that you've actually written and coded and programmed a full project and you can talk about it in a very articulate way and convince us about what you've done rather than, hey, I followed uh, this and this program online and blah, blah, blah. It's about doing. Even if it's not something very big, if you show me original thinking and delivery and uh, ideally using AI, uh, as I mentioned, we've hired uh, complete uh, people who are, who are completely out of university, who are completely self-taught. So that is what is important today. And I believe it's not just important for instead. It's important no matter what you do and important no matter which company you want to apply for. It's about doing rather than asking yourself sort of like many uh, existential and philosophical question. Just get going and see how it feels. If it feels good and you see you feel that you're making progress, it doesn't matter if everybody else telling, is telling you like that's a bad idea. Just keep going. And what's incredible is that as you get more competent and if it is something you're passionate about, you will end up making uh, the right connections. You will end up finding the right opportunities. It's almost like the opportunities are going to find you by themselves because you've already self-selected yourself into a position where these opportunities will happen to you so really it's about doing following your passion and focusing on problems you're ideally competent and can be really competitive about if you can do that i believe your you know uh, ai startup in africa will be uh, very successful and uh, for me it's always a pleasure to share this those those concepts insights it's always a pleasure also to learn. For me, it was an amazing opportunity when I met Anyedi first time when I was invited to be a mentor at uh, Google for Startups, uh, you know, uh, Accelerator Africa. So you will find the right connections because you yourself have put yourself in a position to be passionate and competent about things. So follow your heart. Great things will happen. Okay. Thank you very much, Karim. Um, we are rounding up right now. One other question has popped in. There are two questions around AI in education. There was a question on AI in education, another question on AI in disrupting STEM and innovation. So I'll pick this question. Um, yeah, STEM is really important because it's really about the next, next generation. Your friend, our friend, Bio, wrote an amazing book about beginners AI programming for children ages four to eight, right? So we're in a situation where we're even just struggling to get kids to code, you know, to do basic blocks 
and now people are doing children doing Python and robotics. So how can AI disrupt or enhance STEM and innovation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there, there are multiple opportunities uh, there, whether it is for understanding, you know, how a particular child or student is performing and sort of adapting the program to make it uh, interesting to, to that person, uh, how you deliver actually uh, courses and others. I actually think the pandemic for that point of view has been very educational. But importantly, it's about sort of like, uh, you know, getting... Uh, uh, getting children to be passionate about things. Uh, that This is, for me, the key point. You don't want to feed them so much information that they're overloaded and they're sort of going to get bored with it. Give them the building blocks. And sometimes crazy, crazy things can happen. Uh, you know, I've seen many cases where, especially during the pandemic, people staying at home, uh, children actually progressing much faster because, uh, you know, their parents are taking care of them more. They get let, letting them more opportunities to sort of like browse around books in the house, etc. So it's about really uh, creating favorable building blocks and letting people uh, do stuff, you know, in a sense. Okay. Um um, I don't know, family of your own? I mean, what kind of resources do you give to children, nephews? Like, I'm 10 years old, I want to start. I'm 16 years old, I want to start. Do you have a specific website, some kind of teaching resources? Is there like an organization that you say is doing so much in terms of AI education at various levels that you say, check out this alliance, check out this? Do you have a few recommendations for resources? Uh, I, I think I would recommend uh, the book by uh, by Bio Adekambi and and uh, you know uh, Data Science Nigeria's work in in general. I think it's brilliant. And uh, to tell you that I care, uh, look also at what we do. Uh, we're actually uh, looking forward to partner with Bio to translate his book in in other languages and make sure it has a wider coverage uh, as well. So uh, yeah, if you want one resource, I would say uh, Bayou's book is is an amazing one, particularly that it's it's written by an African for Africa. So that's that's a great uh, starting point, and I, I think it's a part of also explaining AI in in simple terms uh, to children getting them uh, sort of like excited about what it can do. But you know, this generation will grow with AI and in many ways it gets uh, used to AI much faster than us. Uh, you know, like if you look at, you know, children, for example, talking to Alexa, it's perfectly normal for them that you should talk to <laughs> Alexa. You know, like for us, it's still like, wow, this thing is working at least sometimes. <laughs> but uh, for children, it's normal. So it should, right, work. Uh, like, it, it should work, like it works, right? And yes. They don't even question whether it should work or not. Absolutely. I think it's about building critical thinking. For me, uh, the key thing is uh, build up your own informed way about the world. And I mentioned, for example, like, you know, like Bayes theorem and this approach to the world, which is really to see what happens and learn from there. It, it distillate critical thinking to the next generation, I think, is the key point. Because with critical thinking, they will ultimately able to find their way in the information overload that characterizes uh, our world. All right. So Bayer's book is available, I think, on Jumia and Amazon. So depending on exactly. where you're watching this from. Um, final question. Let's say there are two outcomes. You have to wind down InstaDeep because the hype and the bubble busts. Or you exit, you make so much money, you go live on the beach for a few years, and then you get disturbed by this entrepreneur's restlessness, and you have to start another AI startup. Would you do it again in Africa, or will you start in the US, UK, or France? I would definitely, uh, you know, not only do it again, but uh, be deeply committed to the ecosystem. And uh, yeah, for me, I don't see us uh, like sort of deviating from from our journey. For me, instead, it is a long term project. I'm not looking at uh, any sort of like short term outcome, because it's been fun and exciting. Like if if you really love what you do, uh, you know, it's very hard to to do something else. But uh, one of the things I look forward in hopefully doing more in the future, uh, these days is, uh, you know, the, the, the days are pretty filled. I really look forward into helping others believe in their dreams. It's been really like uh, an incredible journey for us, discovering what is possible. 
And what is possible is completely different from what people think is possible. And Sadiq is still on this journey. We're not done yet. We're going to do great things, including, you know, hopefully you'll see announcements in the, in the next few weeks, which should be quite exciting. But importantly, I my personal hope and why I do all this is because it's fun, because I get to meet extraordinary people, because it's intellectually challenging. And I hope, and the way I defined would we have succeeded or not at InstaDeep is whether, you know, in five, 10 years, there are 10 InstaDeeps in Africa or 20 or 50. And people say, you know what, what you did was inspirational. I followed my own journey. I got inspired. I followed my own journey. I learned things. and. It's actually working. And all the naysayers, we got we proved them wrong. That would be for me the ultimate outcome. It's not just about us, it's about the leverage and the impact you can have at the ecosystem as a whole. And this is critical for Africa because you know the way our countries are gonna evolve, the way governments are gonna change their ways, it's not gonna happen because you go and talk to them and say, you know, that's what you should do. This will this will never happen. What will happen is when you build something that is so successful, so compelling, so inspirational, so captivating, mm. that they have to jump on the train because otherwise the train is going to leave them behind. behind. That's the way I hope we can change our continent for the better. And really, this is a message of hope that, that we genuinely mean. We work very hard to make it a reality every day. We've met amazing people, and we always love to hear from more people, more people interested in joining us or working with us or collaborating with us. And there is a model of collaboration across uh, Africa. I mentioned we have collaborations ongoing with Bayou and DSN. There is a great challenge we launched with deep learning in Daba aiming to cure actually a parasitic disease, leishmaniasis, nothing less. This is actually like very daring thinking. People don't think this is possible. We actually think it's possible and we're going to fight very hard, uh, us and others, to make it happen. So if you feel this is interesting, be part of it and be part of it on your terms with your project. We'd love to be helpful to you because together it's not a zero-sum game. It's a positive-sum game and this is how our communities will benefit. So it's an exciting time. It is a positive thumb game. The ultimate outcome will be great. Thank you, Karim. It was amazing. I've taken one minute of your time from your next meeting. Bye for now. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. And talk to you soon, Anyedi. Bye-bye, everyone.